that stops you and yeah. convinces you about a product you've never heard about. And all of a sudden you think, well, maybe I do need this uh, Skin uh, between lotion. the toe, uh, <laughs> toe uh, you know, toe brush to get yeah. the fungus out. I didn't even know I had a fungus between my toes. <laughs> and then he, you know, brings this whole thing. And the next thing you know, you're, you're sitting there, you're like, wait, why am I stopped at the kiosk talking to this random guy? The smooth talking uh, got me. Yeah. Right. No, you're absolutely right. No, you are absolutely right. I get that same feeling. He knows what to say. He's too good. Uh, you know, he's a we call him. Teacher. He's a master debater, and <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. And that's that's what I find frightening. And so yes, you know, when someone like Trump gets out and speaks, it's brash. It is not elegant at all, and he makes a fool of himself a lot of the times. But there, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, he's not polished. He's not reading off a teleprompter. He's not telling us everything that we want to hear or everything that the establishment tells him he needs to say in order to get elected. And that's what I think is kind of sparked in people's minds. Just like when Jones, well, when we went to the and BBC and Alex he is. was yelling uh, there at the BBC and everyone was like, oh my God, how dare he interrupt our tea time. And that's what Alex was saying, that those people are in such a trance that the only way that you can wake them up is to just be wild and blow their mind rather than having a civilized debate. And that's why the guy was like, blah, blah, blah. we're trying to have a civilized debate here. And that ended up being like the biggest spike in views that that show had had. I, I, I don't I, I don't dislike Donald Trump at the end of the day. I really don't. What it is is at the beginning, yes, you know, we're, we're going into the whole election year. Donald Trump comes out of left field. He's, he's hitting home runs. He's saying things that people want to hear. He's getting people energized for the first time. He's talking about let's make America great again. You just see an entire movement of people who would never really even care because they've been so depressed from eight years or even more than eight years, 16 years of just complete and total craziness from, you know, two George, you know, two uh, Bush uh, presidencies and then uh, two Obama presidencies. And now you've got this guy coming in, he's saying all the right things and everyone's all behind it. You know, and I got emotional too. And I even called it back when he first even started thinking about possibly running. I was like, that guy could be the president. And based off of what he was saying, what he was doing, the fact that he could spark emotion in people, the way he could get conviction out of people that normally wouldn't even care about politics, I think that's a huge thing for Trump. But at the end of the day, I've got to put my emotions aside. I've got to put, a, put aside a lot of different things. And I need to sit down and think, you know what, like I said, Bush won, uh, Bush got it back-to-back, -back, Obama got it back-to-back, -back, and things haven't been good. At the end of the day, flashy words and, and cool slogans and walking around and having the celebrities come out there and, you know, and Trump parading around and bragging about himself at every single time that he goes to an event, I'm starting to get sick of it. And at the end of the day, I know that right around the corner, it's time for me to go to that election booth and check that, uh, check that mark beside a name. And I'm not quite convinced yet that it should be Donald Trump. But I do know Rand Paul comes in there, and he brings in real issues. He talks about them. He brings things that I can actually agree with and I can look at and go, all right, he's got some plans. And I don't agree with every single thing that Rand Paul does. But at least when I look at him as a leader of the country, he has a plan laid out. Whereas Donald Trump goes, well, we got a problem with that. Let's fix the vet. All right, well, tell me how you're going to do it, Donald. Or, hey, we've got a problem with immigration. Let's build a wall. Well, guess what? You can build a wall all day long. I've been to the border. They can climb over it and they can dig on it. El Chapo you know? is very good at digging tunnels. I actually right. I saw a documentary yeah, a about how he does that. Yeah, you can build a wall, but... Now they have drones that can drop drugs and things, or there, what, what, there's what, plenty what, of tunnels. What Donald Trump needs to build, what Donald Trump needs to build right now is a true, like a, 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 a plan. Donald Trump needs to build a plan. He keeps talking about making America great again. Well, show us your plan on how you're going to do it. Stop just using talking points like there's a wall that needs to be built. Vets are not getting taken care of. They're trying to take our money. You know, they're trying to take our jobs. China's bad. I'm going to make Mexico build a wall. I mean, you're just rambling off talking points. Right. I want to see a plan, and that's when, if he does actually come out and take the time and they write out a legitimate plan, then maybe I'll put my check mark beside his name. But until then, I need to see it. I still have time to decide whether or not which way I want to go. It's All right, not thank tomorrow. you so much, Biggs. Uh, we wanna, you can hang tight, Biggs. We want to go back to Richard now, because I know he's been waiting. So, oh, Richard, no, I guess he's having some Skype issues. Okay. All right, well, thank you, Biggs. You can hang on if you'd like. Uh, let's go back now to Kit. Uh, Kit, you want to get in the conversation as well. So um, we don't want to stay on this topic we've been talking about with Ted Cruz and all that. You're welcome to other topics if you yeah, have some. One thing I want to point out is that right when uh, Donald Trump, he uh, 
announced that he was going to do the debate and he was going to do this Wounded Warriors project. The New York Times, I believe, they did a hit piece on Wounded Warriors saying it was a corrupt organization that skims from the top and this and that. Okay, even if, regardless if that's true or not, A, the established media was attacking Wounded Warriors just because as a proxy attack Trump. And B, you know, even if uh, all that's true, you know, one thing I do like is the fact that because Trump left the debate and he, he instead focused on this veteran thing, maybe more Americans now are going to focus more on the corruption of the VA. And, you know, it's kind of like he's taking over the narrative, moving it away from the media circus of Fox News presidential baits, you know, asking uh, softball questions about fantasy football. Maybe more Americans now are going to pay a little bit more attention to the veterans and the VA system. Right. And I'm just speculating, but that would be my hope, my optimism. Right, and he that is true because they're not really getting talked about uh, in these past debates, and it, they weren't, the veterans were um, a big issue a year or so ago because we learned about the big scandal there at the VA and how they're wasting all this money, and that the veteran that Richard spoke with brought it back up again. Um, that was one of the big, big scandals with the, that they would have these VA hospitals, and then they would never complete them. And they would spend so much money in these VA hospitals while there are veterans dying on a waiting list. And then it turns out they would throw the, their paperwork away. They, they were never going to get seen anyway. Yeah, so let they, me, let absolutely, me, let me, Leanne. Let me, let me <laughs> jump in over here, over Kit and, and everybody else now that I'm driving home. Uh, number one, am I coming through to you? Yes, yes sir. absolutely. All right, I'm going to wait 15 minutes like Trump did to peak interest <laughs> before I bring a bunch of people out to mumble. My, my biggest criticism of the thing tonight, I think Trump took over dominance, great idea, you know, art of the deal, congratulations, Trump, was that he did have not weak speakers, but just a bunch of people up there like it was a pep rally or something. He should have been talking more about policy. So I'll take it from an A-plus to like a B-plus because of that. It, 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 it's a big problem. But when I was listening on the free iPhone app just now, that's really key, folks, free iPhone app at Infowars.com forward slash show. I was listening driving home to that because uh, the local station was airing an ad over it, which is fine. That's their space to do it. Uh, I was listening to you, and he was making the point, the best point Biggs made tonight, uh, because I wasn't getting where he was coming from earlier, is Trump needs to build a plan, not a wall, because we need troops and surveillance at the key routes where things are coming over, and we need surveillance on our border, and we need to not have the government ship the illegals in and, you know, have JFK every day with planes coming in with no IDs coming in. The government's bringing in the radical Islamists. The government's opened the borders. Okay. And like Ron Paul said five years ago, the wall they want to build is for us. So it's hypocritical. It's ridiculous. And quite frankly, I don't care if women and kids come into the U.S. I don't like every criminal worldwide. Instead of criminals in the U.S. running to Mexico, you know, historically, now the criminals from the whole world, from China to Germany to Russia to Mexico, from Venezuela, Nicaragua, El Salvador, Chile, you know, come here. So that's the point. But the globalists want to service all that and want to, you know, socialize all that, want to use the crime to roll out a police state, just like with the radical Islamic invaders. But here's the key. What Joe Biggs said earlier is absolutely key. And I'm going to ask Paul Watson right now. I'm going to call and leave him a message. He's asleep. It's like 5 in the morning uh, where he's asleep in London. The headline should be, Trump, we don't need a wall, we need a plan. A lot of what he says says I'm against political correctness. So the article starts out, hey, we get, you got a plan against political correctness or for the First Amendment. We get, you got a plan to lower taxes, that's great. You got a plan, you're pro Second Amendment. We need to hear a plan economically, specifically on tariffs and trade and what you're going to do and what you're going to do on the border and what you're going to do with the VA. Because, man, let me tell you, the VA is one of the most bloated bureaucracies. We're talking about close to $80,000 a year per veteran. It is the government using the love of veterans, the love of our families, the love of our heroes uh, to literally steal everything. I mean, that, that guest earlier saying, why is the media always building buildings, but, but, you know, but then tearing them down? Because it's all a scam for special interests. We need to, it's just like the Pentagon spends 1% on infantry, though they do 90% of the fighting. And then we're paying a billion dollars for these joint strike fighters that aren't as good as an F-15. It's a scam. It's special interest that tell us all day about their patriotism, but are destroying our, our system and enslaving us. So I agree with Biggs that it looks bad to be using the veterans, but, you know, it's an unknown quantity. 
he can specifically get into that. But Trump needs to have his plan, build a plan and state it, put it out, not a wall, because a wall saying Mexico will pay for it. Okay, I get it. You make them pay for it with a tariff or whatever. That's true. We have one side of the old with tariff with, uh, with, with, with Mexico, but not because the Mexicans are doing it to us. Our elite have deals with their El Jefes to use their slave labor to leverage everybody out. So that's the bottom line. You guys got 20 minutes left. Infowars.com. Notice we overrid our main video and even audio feeds at Infowars.com, overriding the show today, uh, which is what funds our whole operation, which is fine. But we're talking about thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars we lost tonight, just in bandwidth and then in cost of lost advertising. So support Infowars.com, support Infowarsstore.com. Huge specials, free shipping on fifty dollar orders or more. Pro gun T-shirts, Hillary for prison T-shirts. Uh, incredible nutraceuticals, DNA Force X2, all of it. If you don't financially support us, folks, like we do everybody else, you're not in the fight. Infowars.com, Infowarsstore.com. You are the resistance, folks. Spread the word and also support us and pray for us. Back to Chitari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, and all the great crew in Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide. All Thank right. you, Alex. Thank you so much, Alex. Now, Joe Biggs, uh, you were mentioned there in that segment by Alex. Uh, did you have any comment to what he had to say there? Well, I mean, basically, that's what I've been trying to get to the entire night. Is uh, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to, uh, to get out exactly what it is I want. <laughs> like I said, I, I don't dislike Donald Trump. I'm disappointed with the fact that he keeps talking about making America great again without a plan. And coming from a non-commissioned officer standpoint, being in the military, being in combat, I can't just look at my soldiers and go, all right, we're going to kill the enemy. All right, let's go. And we walk off. Because guess what? We're all going to get shot up. We're going to get killed. We don't have a plan. You have to strategically talk to your people. So him running for president, he needs to talk to the American people, lay out a plan. So us, the people, we can go, okay, I think you're going to be uh, good for this job. And you're going to get more people because I'll vote for him if I see a plan. I just don't see one yet, so that's why I'm still going to be skeptical. Oh, well, yeah, and that's a big issue with many politicians. I'm reminded of a, a, a skit, <laughs> a skit he did on, I believe it was Jimmy Fallon, and they were kind of poking fun of his policies, and he says, I'm going to fix the economy. He's like, well, how are you going to do it? He's like, I'm just going to fix it. He's like, 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 what's your plan? So I do agree with that. It's going to be huge. And like I said, I, I don't think yeah. Donald Trump is the, the scum of the earth, you know, or anything like that, similar to the way I feel about Megyn Kelly, but... Like I said, he has some, said some things that I don't agree with, and but we can move on to that and talk about some of the other people because Donald Trump was the only person we saw on the stage tonight. Of course, he was the big draw in his own private event, but uh, maybe we could do a bit of a roundtable. I don't know if we could uh, pipe Biggs and Kidd in simultaneous, but uh, I just want to go around and just see what everybody thought of the contenders at out. Obviously, we talked about talked over most of what was said, but. Well, what you know of these contenders, of the people who are still in the race, whether they be Democrats, Republicans, uh, Gary Johnson threw his hat into the ring as a libertarian. Uh, does anybody have any particular thoughts? Well, I mean, Carly, Car Carly Fiorina, I, if she's still running, like her whole thing is, I'm also a woman, and and so she's just attacking Hillary, saying how she's a better woman, and she actually loves her husband, and if he had treated her the way Hillary's did, she would have left him long ago. So she's just playing the whole woman card. The way she is trying to say Hillary is. So, I mean, get on, yeah, get on out of campaign, there. Whoever's in her campaign and told her to do that is smart, though. To, to focus that as a woman, being in that position as, as a married woman with a husband, to do that was ingenious. I mean, that was amazing to see her come out and attack Hillary like that and go, you know what? I know where my husband is. Do you know where yours is? <laughs> well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying is that she still does that in every single debate. But I guess she's trying to say... I'm the candidate that's going to really take on Hillary, and I would love to see the two of them go at it on the debate stage. So, well, if Hillary can get there on time and you know not be taking all these bathroom breaks and all that, <laughs> uh, Kid Daniels, are you, are you still out there for us? Yeah, it's interesting you uh, talk about the fact that Hillary's bathroom breaks. This is something Matt Drudge said back October: is that she's not a contender. She's got so many health issues that nobody's pointing out. She's literally like, kind of like uh, on Futurama. She's like one of those head in the jars. Yeah. I mean, that's how yeah. she is health-wise. So it's like in, the establishment is trying to push her into presidency because she's very tied in very closely. George Soros, she gets her orders from CFR. She even admitted that once, that she her office was just down the street from the CFR where she could get her orders. 
So, you know, they, they know she's on her on the same team, but mm -hmm. she's a extremely health un 